everybody welcome back in this video we'll be discussing about the s block elements when we were talking about the periodicity of elements we discussed that the periodic table is divided into four different blocks right the first one is s block then comes p block then comes d block and then comes f block so we'll discuss about all of this one by one first up we'll discuss about the s block elements fine so the S block elements has further categories. There are two groups of elements, right? And the first group is called the alkali metals, fine. And the second group is called the alkaline earth metals, right? First, we'll discuss about the group one elements, that is alkali metals. And after a while, we'll discuss about the alkaline earth metals, fine. So these alkali metals have the outer electronic configuration NS1, fine. They're in the S block, and their outer valence shell electron is NS1, fine. And these are all the electronic configuration of all the alkali metals. The alkali metals are lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, etc. Fine. So they have one valence electron that is NS1. And you can see from the below illustration that as we go down the group, the size of the atom increases. Like lithium, uh, sodium is uh, has a larger size than lithium and potassium has larger size than sodium, etc. Fine. And they are most electropositive metals. Alkali metals are the most electropositive metals. Fine. Next, the loosely held S electron in the outermost shell. So, since they have only one electron and that one electron belongs to the S orbit, orbital, so they have loosely held S electron in the outermost shell. Hence, they readily give away this electron. Fine. And they react easily. So they readily lose electrons to give mono to form monovalent m plus ions. What happens when a element gives away an electron? Fine. When an atom gives away an electron, it gains positive charge. Fine. So since they have one s electron, they give away the electron and become positively charged metals. Fine. And they're never found in free state in nature. Fine. So now we'll discuss about the atomic and ionic radii of these s block elements. So we'll go about all of this. We'll discuss about the trends as well. Fine. First of all, uh, alkali metals. So we'll discuss about the atomic and ionic radii of alkali metals. So the alkali metals have the largest sizes in the particular period of a periodic table. So there are seven periods in the periodic table, right? And when we consider all the elements in a particular period, the alkali metals have the largest sizes compared to all the elements in the period. Fine. And as the atomic number increases, atom becomes larger. As we said, as we go down the group, as the atomic number of the alkali metal increases, the atoms become larger. And we saw a picture of that as well, right? And the monovalent ions are smaller than the parent atom. Of course, the parent atom has all the electrons, right? Monovalent ion is the parent atom has given away one electron. And hence, the size of the monovalent atom will be less. Monovalent ions will be less. Yes? Next. So this is how these are all the alkali metals and as we go down the group as we discuss now size increases right and hence the atomic radii also increases as the size increases fine and hence the ionic radii also increases as the size increases fine. So next we'll discuss about the ionization enthalpy fine all these alkali metals have considerably low ionization enthalpy right we discussed that ionization enthalpy increases as we move across the period right. So alkali metals are in the extreme right side of the period, right? So have they, they have low ionization enthalpy when compared to other elements. And the effect of increasing size outweighs the increasing nuclear charge and the outermost electron is very well screened from the nuclear charge. We discuss this as well. As we go down the group, what happens? The size increases, right? So the size of the S orbital increases. And when we go down the group, like all this rubidium, cesium, they'll have the presence of d orbitals, f orbitals as well, right? And hence, when the size increases, these x electrons on the outer valence shell are protected, that is, they are screened, shielded by the electrons present in this d and f orbitals, right? The screening effect that happens, and hence, the, when the size increases, they experience less nuclear charge, fine? And hence, the ionization enthalpy also decreases as we go down the group. Fine. Next, we'll discuss about the hydration enthalpy. So, the hydration enthalpy of this alkali metals is lithium has more hydration enthalpy than sodium. Then comes potassium. So, it is the reverse order, right? It decreases as we go down the group. And lithium has the maximum degree of hydration. And lithium salts are mostly hydrated. Fine. 
and the trend is it reduces as we go down the group fine so next talking about the physical properties all alkali metals are silvery white they're soft and they're light metals fine and because of the large size they have low density fine and the density increases as we go down the group fine and however potassium is lighter than sodium this is an exception fine see the alkali metals have large size and hence density is we know that density is inversely related to volume right so as the size increases density decreases fine so they have low density and because of the large size and the density increases down the group however potassium is lighter than sodium and hence it's an exception fine and uh, these are all uh, the appearance of uh, how these metals look like there you can see that the silvery white right then the presence of a single valence electrons forms the weak metallic bonding right we discussed that they readily give up one electron right they easily give up an electron and hence the metallic bonding is weak since they have only one s electron and hence the boiling point and melting point are low in case of alkali metals and this is one interesting factor and you'll be usually observe this when you do the laboratory experiments fine so this alkali metals and the salts they impart color to the flame when you bring this alkali metal salts near the flame when you introduce it to the flame they impart some characteristic color to the flame to an oxidizing flame and uh, every element every metal imparts different color right hence their characteristic colors fine and the heat from the flame what happens is the heat from the flame excites an electron present in the alkali metal right excites an electron that is the outermost orbit electron to higher energy level fine and when this electron comes back to its normal state it uh, emits the it emits the radiation right in the uh, it emits radiation in the visible region of the spectrum and hence we give different colors fine so in case of lithium the color observed is crimson red in case of sodium when you introduce sodium to the flame we observe yellow color in case of potassium it's violet in case of rubidium is red violet and in case of cesium is blue you can see an image of all this fine and next the chemical properties uh we know that they are highly alkali metals are highly reactive because of the large size and they have low ionization enthalpy and since they have only one electron they readily give away the electrons right so we'll discuss about the reactivity towards air so when alkali metals react with air they form oxides uh para and they form oxides fine they, when they react in dry air they form oxides and these oxides further when they react with moisture they form peroxides and then they form superoxides as well the superoxide that is o2 minus is stable only in the presence of large cations like potassium rubidium cesium etc fine and the reactivity of the oxygen increases as we go down the group from lithium to cesium fine and all these alkali metals have plus 1 oxidation states fine and because of their high reactivity towards air and water alkali metals are normally stored in kerosene oil we know that sodium is highly reactive right it should not be introduced to air or water hence it is stored under kerosene yeah right and one more exceptional behavior of lithium we can see here it reacts with the nitrogen present in the air and forms nitride as well fine lithium has started to show an exceptional behavior compared to the other elements of the alkali metals fine this is all about the alkali metals reaction with air next we'll discuss about the reactivity towards water so when these alkali metals react with water they form dihydrogen and hydroxide ions fine and they form the metal ions as well that is m plus fine and uh, so they so we can see the reaction in case of lithium sodium and potassium it's shown here they go from oxidation state 0 to 1 after reacting with water they become positive ions right metal ions and next reactivity towards dihydrogen so this alkali metals reacts with dihydrogen at a little higher temperature around 673 kelvin and form metal hydrides fine and next uh, when they react with halogen they form ionic halides that is m plus and xx is nothing but halogen right so they react with halogen and form ionic halides but except in case of lithium again lithium is an exception over here case of lithium they form somewhat covalent halides fine so this is because of the high polarization capacity of lithium ion so what is polarization polarization is the distortion of the electron cloud of the anion by the cation fine lithium is a cation right li plus 
what happens is the halogens are all anions right when the ha ha halogens having higher uh, sizes when they come near the lithium what happens is it distorts the electron clouds of these halogens and hence it forms covalent bond right it does not form the ionic bond fine next reducing nature all these alkali metals are strong reducing agents fine and lithium is the most and the sodium is the least powerful when we talk about the reducing nature all the alkali metals are strong reducing agent and lithium is the most reducing agent most powerful agent reducing agent and sodium is the least fine and when we talk about the solutions in liquid ammonia when alkali metals are dissolved in liquid ammonia they form ammoniated cation and ammoniated electron they basically form blue colored solution which is conducting in nature and this conducting property is got from the ammoniated electron what happens is this ammoniated electron absorbs the, the energy in the visible region and then it emits blue it imparts blue color to the solution and hence it is conducting fine this is about the chemical properties of the alkali metals now we'll move to the general characteristics of the alkali metals fine so this alkali metals form oxides and hydroxides so when they form metal oxide that is a metal oxide m2o reacts with water and forms metal ion and hydroxide ion fine so they are forming metal ion and hydroxide ion when they react with water and when metal oxides are when metal peroxide react with water they form metal ion hydroxide ion and hydrogen peroxide so we saw how metal oxide reacts with water and how metal peroxide reacts with water when metal superoxide reacts with water they form metal ion hydroxide ion they form para hydrogen peroxide as well and they form a molecule of oxygen so this is how this metal oxide metal superoxide and metal peroxide reacts with water fine and uh, m is nothing but alkali metals in case of all this fine so we'll discuss about halides when metals react with halogen gas they form ionic metal halides we discussed this right all are usually ionic halides except for lithium it forms covalent fine and yeah next uh, salts so of oxo acids so you can see all this example carboxylic acid sulfuric acid carbonic acid these are all called oxo acids basically oxo acid what happens is the hydrogen that is the proton right acidic proton is attached to o right which is attached to c or s or p whatever right so this acidic proton is attached to the hydroxyl group with to an atom which contains another oxo group that is the atom contains another double bond o fine so this hydroxyl ion uh, acidic proton is attached to the hydroxyl group with an oxo group attached to the same atom and the alkali metals form salts with all the oxo acids fine and they are generally soluble in water and they are thermally stable fine that is the alkali metal salts with the oxo acids are generally uh, soluble in water and they are thermally stable as well fine and the carbonates and hydrogen carbonates are highly stable to heat so when this um, alkali metals react with carboxylic acid carbonic acid and all they form carbonates and hydrogen carbonates right and they are highly stable to heat heat and this increases as we go down the group that is what is said the trend increases as we go down the group the formation of carbonates hydrocarbon hydrogen carbonates and the stability fine this is about the salts of oxo acids with uh, alkali metals next we'll discuss about the anomalous properties of lithium while we were discussing about the physical chemical properties itself we came across uh, various uh, in cases in various cases we came across that lithium has an exceptional behavior when compared to other elements right so we'll discuss about the anomalous properties of this lithium fine lithium has exceptionally small size of its atom and ion right lithium atom is small in size and even the lithium ion is also small in size and they have high polarizing power we discussed about the polarizing ability of the lithium as well right that is they have high charge to radius ratio and what they do they distort the electron cloud of the anion right and uh, the increased covalent character because of this high polarizing power they have a covalent character right they form covalent bond and this increased covalent character uh, makes them soluble in organic solvents fine and lithium shows diagonal relationship with magnesium this we'll discuss a bit later fine and 
Lithium, when we talk about the properties, lithium is much harder and its melting point and boiling points are higher than that of other alkali metals. Fine. And lithium is the least reactive when compared to all the alkali metals, but is the strongest reducing agent. Fine. And lithium chloride is the liquid and crystallizes as a hydrate, whereas other alkali metal chlorides do not form hydrides. Fine. And lithium hydrogen carbonate is not obtained in the solid, while all the other elements form solid hydrogen carbonates. And then lithium, unlike other alkali metals, forms no ethyl eth ethyanide when it reacts with ethyne. Fine. And lithium nitrate, when heated, gives lithium oxide, whereas other alkali metal nitrates do not decomp uh, decompose to give corresponding nitrite. Fine. So we'll discuss, uh, we'll revise it up again. Lithium has exceptionally small size of atom and ion. It has high polarizing power, right? And it shows diagonal relationship with magnesium, which we'll discuss now. And lithium is much harder and its boiling point and melting point are higher compared to the other alkali metals. Fine. And it's the least reactive and it is a strong reducing agent when compared to all the alkali metals. Fine. And lithium chloride is deliquescent and it crystallizes as, uh, as a hydrate, whereas other alkali metal chlorides do not form hydrates. Fine. And lithium hydrogen carbonate is not obtained in solid, while all the other alkali metal carbonates are uh, hydrogen carbonates are solids. Fine. And lithium forms no mm -hmm. ethanide when it reacts with ethyne, mm -hmm. but uh, other alkali metals form ethanide while reacting with ethyne. Fine. And the lithium nitrate, when heated, gives lithium oxide, whereas other alkali metal nitrates decompose to give corresponding nitrate, nitrite. Okay. Fine. So this is about the anomalous properties of lithium. Next, now we'll discuss about the similarities between lithium and magnesium. We just discussed that lithium has a diagonal relationship with magnesium, right? So we'll discuss about the similarities between the two. So basically lithium is in the group 1 of al that is alkali metals and magnesium is in the group 2 that is alkaline earth metal and lithium is in the period 2 and this is in the Mg is in the period 3. You can see the relationship that is they are diagonal to each other and there are similarities between them. Fine. So uh, these are few of the similarities between lithium and magnesium. Lithium and magnesium are harder and the other elements in the respective groups are not that hard. Fine. And uh, they are usually soft. Fine. Lithium and magnesium react slowly with water. Their oxides and hydroxide are much less soluble and their hydroxide decompose on heating. And both of them form nitrites when they react with nitrogen present in the air. Fine. And they do not give superoxides and form only oxides. Fine. And the carbonates of lithium and magnesium decompose upon heating to form their respective oxides and carbon dioxide. Fine. And the lithium and magnesium do not form bicarbonates. Both lithium chloride and magnesium chloride are soluble in ethanol as and they are deliquescent and they crystallize from aqueous solution or as hydrates. Fine. So, uh, summing up this, the lithium and magnesium are harder when compared to the other elements of the S block. Fine. And lithium and magnesium react slowly with water. And their oxides and hydroxide are much less soluble and their hydroxide decompose on heating. Fine. And they form nitrides, that is lithium nitride and magnesium nitride right? when they react with the nitrogen present in air. Fine. And they do not give superoxide, but they form only oxides. Both lithium and magnesium form only oxides and they do not give superoxides. Fine. And the carbonates of lithium and magnesium decompose upon heating and form their respective oxides and carbon dioxide. So the lithium and magnesium carbonates, when they are heated, they decompose to form their respective oxides and they give carbon dioxide as well. Fine. And they do not form bicarbonates. Both lithium and magnesium, they do not form bicarbonates. And lithium chloride and magnesium chloride, both are deliquescent and they crystallize from aqueous solution as hydrates. So these are the similarities between lithium and magnesium and hence they are known to have diagonal relationship. Fine. Some important components of sodium. Fine. We know that sodium has the atomic number 11, right? It has some important compounds like it forms sodium carbonate. Uh, sodium carbonate is also known as washing soda, fine? And then there's sodium chloride that is NaCl. That is nothing but the salt we use in our cooking, right? And uh, that is the table salt, fine? Then we have sodium hydroxide known as caustic soda. That is NaOH. 
and then we'll be discussing about sodium hydrogen carbonate that is baking soda NaHCO3 fine first we'll discuss about sodium carbonate fine and this is how the structure of sodium carbonate looks like and these are the reactions which are involved in the formation of sodium carbonate fine and that is uh, ammonia reacts with carbon dioxide and water and at the end we get sodium carbonate fine and it is a white crystalline solid which exists as decahydrate that is sodium carbonate decahydrate 10 h2o fine and it is also known as washing soda yes and it is readily soluble in water so sodium carbonate known as washing soda is readily soluble in water and it exists as a white crystalline solid as a decahydrate fine and what are the uses of this washing soda fine sodium carbonate known as washing soda is used in glass soap and paper industries fine and they are used in the manufacture of sodium compounds such as borax fine and they are used as cleaning agent for domestic purposes and they are also used for the removing permanent hardness of water fine they are used in soap glass and paper industries and they are used in the manufacture of borax they are used as cleaning agent for domestic purposes and they are used to remove permanent hardness of the water so this is about sodium carbonate next sodium chloride uh, sodium chloride this is how the ions that is sodium chloride looks like and the uses of sodium chloride sodium chloride is basically the table salt with whatever we use in cooking right that is the salt and it uses as it's used as common salt or table salt for domestic purpose yes and it is used for the preparation of na2o2 naoh that is sodium hydroxide and sodium carbonate fine and next is the sodium hydroxide and this is the structure of sodium hydroxide and uh, the uses of sodium hydroxide is it's used in the manufacture of soap paper artificial silk and few chemicals as well and it is used as a laboratory reagent you'll be using it when you do some reactions and it's used in petroleum refining it's used in the purification of bauxite and it's used in textile industries for mercurizing cotton fabrics fine and it's used in the preparation of pure fats and oils as well so these are the wide applications that is uses of sodium hydroxide fine next we'll talk about sodium hydrogen carbonate so this is the structure of the sodium hydrogen carbonate fine and the uses are it is used as mild antiseptic for skin infections fine and it is used in fire extinguishers so these are the few important compounds of sodium and the uses of them as well so this is all about sodium and uh, now let us discuss about the biological importance of sodium and potassium biological importance is related to biology our body etc fine so we'll uh, discuss how this sodium and potassium that is the alkali metals are important for us fine so typically a 70 kg man an adult man contains no uh, request no uh, contains 90 grams of sodium and 170 grams of potassium uh, when compared to the iron content is very less that is 5 grams of iron and 0 0.06 grams of copper now at least we have an idea that how much sodium and potassium is important biologically we need 90 grams of sodium and 170 grams of potassium so sodium ions are found primarily on the outside of the cells of the living beings fine and they're being located in blood plasma and in the interfacial fluid which surrounds the cell so the sodium ions are located outside the cells and they are in the plasma of the blood as well and in the interstitial, interstitial fluid which surrounds the cell. So, so the cells are surrounded by interstitial fluid. So sodium ions are present there also. And these ions participate in the transmission of nerve signals which is very important and they are also uh, uh, taking part in regulating the flow of water across the cell membranes and in the transport of sugar and amino acids in the cell so sodiums are used for basically most of the transports in the body right they are used in the transmission of nerve cells and they regulate the flow of water across the cell membranes and in the transport of sugar and amino acids into the cells fine the sodium and potassium although they are uh, so similar but they differently they have the different penetrative ability inside the cell membranes fine we just discussed that they regulate the water sodium ions regulate the water flow inside the cell membranes across the cell membranes right although sodium and potassium are quite similar but they have different penetration ability inside the cell membranes and in their transport mechanisms as well and in their efficiency to activate enzymes fine so now we know that sodium and potassium 
have penetrated inside cell membranes then they have all these transport mechanisms and they uh, they activate the enzymes as well yes and hence potassium ions are the most abundant cations within the cell grades fine potassium ions are cations right and they are the most abundant cations within the cell fluids and they activate many enzymes and they participate in the oxidation of glucose to produce atp oxidation of glucose to produce atp is very important right we get energy from that yes and with sodium uh, are responsible for the transmission of the nerve cells yes and these two main job is these two are helpful in transport mechanism they transmission of nerve cells they regulate the flow of water across the cell membranes they penetrate inside the cell membranes right and they are helpful in the transport of sugar and amino acids to cell and the oxidation of glucose to atp and uh, what else they penetrate into the cell membranes and they activate the enzymes as well so these are most of the importance of sodium and potassium now we know how important sodium and potassium is for our body right yeah this is about the alkali metals and summarizing the trends of the alkali metals alkali metals the size increases as we go down the group you can see here lithium has a smaller size nitrogen has comparatively bigger potassium is bigger than that rubidium is bigger than that etc and as the size increases the reactivity increases fine the atomic radius increases and hence the ionic radius also increases yes the increase in the electron shells shielding the outer electrons yes the outer electrons are shielded as the size increases right and increase in ease of losing outer electrons to form positive ions as the size increases they easily lose electrons to form positive ions m plus ions right and as the size increases the tendency for melt um, melting points and the boiling points also decrease fine and the tendency for density increases that is the density increases as the size increases right and the first three elements float on water as well except for the hydration enthalpy it decreases as we go down the group fine this is about the alkali metals and the trends of the alkali metals and thank you for watching and if you are liking this videos please don't forget to like share and subscribe to read my course thank you